Am I the a-hole for reminding my ex-stepdaughter that I wasn't her father and not committing to an earlier promise? When my ex-stepdaughter was 14, she said she wanted to study abroad in the UK, but it would be too expensive, so I told her that I'd start saving for that then so that we could actually send her there. I opened a savings account the next day for that, and it was supposed to cover tuition, housing, and some allowance. The next year, her mother and I divorced. I still tried to maintain a relationship with her, but that ended quite sour when she said I wasn't her father, and I should stop being involved as if I was. I said all right, and that the ball would be in her court then, and we never saw each other again. That was until two days ago. She, 19, came knocking on my door. I invited her in. We sat down, and she asked me if I remembered that promise I'd made her when she was younger. I asked which one, and she said the college fund won. I said I did remember, and she said she wanted some of that money right now to cover expenses and that she'd use the rest to actually study abroad next year. In case you forgot, this was the first time we'd spoken for four years. So I told her that since we lost contact, I repurposed that money a long time ago, so there was unfortunately nothing there to give her. She was rather unhappy about that. It said something around the lines of, Figured, you were always full of it. So much for, I'll always be there, dad. A call back to when we told her about the divorce and I said I would still be in her life and she could still call me dad. This obviously upset me, so I responded with the fact that she stonewalled me after the divorce and reminded her that I wasn't her father like she'd said, so she had no right to complain. She left afterwards and I got a call yesterday from her mother cussing out for ain't being it. Am I the a-hole? Now for the top comments. Not the a-hole. It's pretty ridiculous of her to expect that the money would still be waiting for her after pretending you didn't exist for four years. She made it very clear that she didn't want a relationship after the divorce, and yet she still expects to reap the benefits you promised when you were close. And she isn't even going abroad. She just wants his money and will maybe go next year. Not even then if the grapevine says she's pregnant. Money is going to raise the baby. I would put money on her mother sending her. Not day home. The divorce closed the bank of dad, especially after she pushed you out of her life. You, as your stepfather, I'll save for your tuition. Divorce happens. She, you're not my father. Be gone. Adios. You, okay, call if you change your mind. Hint, she did not. Four years later, she, where is my money? The entitlement is really, really strong with her. Not day home. She's just being opportunistic. She knew how to find you, right? She could have sent a message to you any time in the past four years but waited until she wanted some cash. Next story. Am I the a-hole for telling off my wife because she promised my time for this coming weekend? My wife, 35 female, and I, 36 male, have a five-year-old son. We both work full-time, but my wife sometimes needs to work on weekends. Maybe two to three weekends a month. I enjoy the time alone with my son when she is at work on weekends as I think it really gives us time to bond just the two of us. But my wife has a habit of arranging playdates and other activities for the days that she works on weekends. I find it incredibly disrespectful to me and I have told her many times that I don't like her doing it. This coming weekend, she has to work on Saturday. Last night, she told me that our son asked if he could have some friends from his kindergarten class over this weekend. She agreed and they invited a few friends over to play on Saturday. When she told me, I got mad at her. I told her it was BS that she promised my time like that, when she isn't going to be here. I told her it's not right that she offered me to supervise multiple kids like that without talking to me first. She asked if I had anything planned, and I told her that no, I did not have anything planned, but that's not the point. She said that we shouldn't be discouraging our son from wanting to be social and we should be happy as making friends. When she realized how upset I was, she offered to cancel with the other parents or try to reschedule but she said that our son was really looking forward to having friends over and she didn't want to disappoint him. I felt like that was a low blow because then it makes me the bad guy if I tell her to cancel. So I told her that we can go ahead with a play date but that I am taking all day Sunday for myself. I told her that I don't know what I'm going to do yet, but that she's going to be fully responsible for our son that day. I told her that I don't care if all I'm going to do is sit and watch football all day but that she gets to be the one to watch our son. She got mad at me, because that's her only day off all week and she just wants to relax too. I told her that's not my fault, 
And that if she wants to promise my time on weekends, that I should at least get to decide when I want time for myself. She told me I'm being petty, and that my son and his friends will be fine playing by themselves for the most part. She said it will only be for a few hours and she already told the other parents that we aren't going to be feeding them dinner or anything like that. So all I have to do is make sure no one gets hurt. I told her that next time she wants to arrange a play date, that she can schedule it for when she's able to at least help or talk to me first. I reminded her that this isn't the first time she's done something like this and that I'm tired of her scheduling my time for me like I'm her employee. She thinks I'm blowing this out of proportion. And since I don't have anything planned, it's not that hard to just sit around a house and watch kids play for a few hours. Not day home. How would she feel if you volunteered her time before even asking her about it? I think the best way to handle this, if she's unwilling to budge on at least talking to you first, is to give her a taste of her own medicine. Your equal partners. And while care for your child is implied and joint, that doesn't extend to dropping other kids on one another. It's rude as heck, and not respectful of each other's time. You're justified in your irritation. At least get her to a point where she discusses it with you first. He did. He volunteered her to watch her own son that Sunday so he can get some rest too. And she got angry. He's not the a-hole. She can dish out his time, but he can't do it to her. They don't seem to be communicating well, but she needs to respect his time as well. That was a more petty and reactive way to manage it. It doesn't really establish the point for her. These situations tend to work out better if you can recreate the full conditions almost entirely, let her get mad about it, and then draw her attention to the immediate parallel. Doing this while she's already feeling defensive over the situation will just make her more defensive and doesn't really establish the point in a constructive manner. Psychology is our friend. Not day whole. My husband and I do not volunteer each other for things. I don't even make myself an appointment that will leave him on the spot on an evening or weekend without consulting him first, and he does the same for me. Yes, I'd like to set up a play date for X time. Let me check with my husband first to make sure we have a clear schedule. And then, doing that is not that hard. Right, who volunteers someone for something, not knowing if they even have plans, or don't have plans? It's not your life, it's theirs. My wife did this to me exactly once in our relationship where she didn't consult me beforehand. What she didn't know was that I had a roof install scheduled for work. I had to delay and ended up losing the contract just asking for it. Lost about $3,000 because of the situation. Not day haul. I actually think you should have let her cancel the play date. She's doing this because she gets all the credit and none of the work. All the parents are thanking her and telling her how thoughtful she is. She gets to feel like a good mom while you do the work. Not cool. This will only stop when you actually start making her cancel these plans. Until she has to feel the embarrassment of going back on her promise, she's never going to stop. Next story. Am I the a-hole for telling my friend she should work less if she wants more time with her husband? About seven months ago, my friend Tori, 34 female, began to vent to us about some of her marital problems. Namely, that her husband, Jack, 35 male, doesn't have time for her. At first, we let her vent and just listened to her and gave her support. I know that Jack is a stay-at-home dad that works part-time from home, and Tori's pretty big into her career. At the time, I didn't question how things were when she got home because I just wanted to listen to her. Since then, she's had the same complaints every time we see her and some of our friends started to offer her advice. Like tell Jack how he was hurting her feelings and tell him what she needed from him. It sounded like good advice. This year, our kids are in the same kindergarten class. So Jack, myself, and another friend have been taking turns carpooling the kids. Whenever I drop their kid off and take them inside, I would always see Jack finishing up cleaning, laundry, cooking, and other household chores. Tori also now has two nights a week where she either comes to one of our houses after work or she goes out with her coworkers after work. Yet when we see her, she still has the same complaint about Jack not having time for her. This last time I saw Tori, some of our friends had started to talk down about him to her about the whole situation. I asked Tori if Jack is still doing most of the childcare and housework while working from home, and she said yes. I asked her if she gets paid overtime for working so many hours that they need the money, and she said no. She's on salary, but she wants to get to the next level. I told her it sounds like she had been misrepresenting the situation. And it doesn't sound like Jack doesn't have time for her, but she may not be making time for him. And if she wants time with him, she should cut back on her hours so she's home at a reasonable time. 
and maybe not go socialize two nights a week while he's at home. Tori started to cry and tell me I was shaming her for having her career, and our friend agreed. I said it wasn't like that at all and that there was nothing wrong with her having a career. But if all the other advice hadn't been working after so many months, maybe she needed to look at how she was also contributing to the problem. Now they're both upset and barely talking to me. Was I so wrong to tell her that? Am I the a-hole? Now for the top comments. Not the a-hole. She's doing the same thing to her husband what men used to do to their wives. It wasn't okay when they did it to us and it's not okay to do it to them. You can't prioritize your work and social life, then complain that your spouse who is filling in all of the blanks doesn't have time to prioritize you. Running a household is a lot of work. And if a working woman has a stay-at-home husband who is doing that work, he deserves the same respect that we all would expect a working husband to give to a stay-at-home wife. This right here. My husband and I are working parents with a new baby and I am back from maternity leave and attempting to recoup my lost progress and try to make a play to manage a new restructured department. It means lots of tired days at work, so he has been pitching in more at home and with baby. But we have our two nights a week of movie date nights after the baby is asleep to prioritize our marriage and we schedule having our respective me and social time so we don't burn out. It doesn't sound Yopi's Fred is prioritizing anything but herself. You aren't shaming her for having a career. That's a straw man. The situation seems to be exactly how you're seeing it. Not day whole. It doesn't sound like Tori's even trying to make time for her husband. Her husband sounds like he's got a full plate and is supporting her advancing her career. I feel like she's falling into this trap of having it all. The kids, the career, the relationship. Having it all is a myth. There are only so many hours of the day, so many days in a year. If she wants to advance her career, that's fine, but it will come at the cost of time with her family. She has to accept that. Not day haul. Your question was completely legitimate. And frankly, overdue considering that she complains about the same issue over and over again without trying to do anything to change the situation. Now for the last story. Am I the a-hole for kicking my sister out of my house for being crazy? I'm 22 female. I'm a stay-at-home mom slash student to a three-month-old boy. My husband is a line cook, so he's not earning the world of money right now. I don't work because childcare in my area would cost more than what I would earn in a lot of jobs available to me. My sister Jane works part-time, but she only pays the internet bill. She's been living with us for six-ish months now since my parents are at their wits end with her mental illness. Jane has orthorexia, OCD, bipolar, and severe anxiety. She's got this idea in her head recently that the brand of formula I feed my son is going to harm him. She keeps trying to get me to change the brand he's on. I can't, because the brand I use is the cheapest, which is all we can currently afford and the baby tolerates this brand amazingly well. My sister thinks I should be breastfeeding the baby but agrees that the ship has sailed. She still loses her mind every time I go to make a bottle. She's in a mild manic episode right now which are usually manageable and tolerable but this one takes the cake. In the 15 freaking minutes it took me to shower while baby was napping, she managed to get rid of most food she thinks is harmful. As in opened the containers and dumped them on the floor. A lot of that was baby formula. She said if I continued to feed it to my son he would die and if he died, she'd be responsible since she did nothing. I lost it and ripped her a new one. I told her she's absolutely insane and that she belongs in a secure home or something where she can't harm other people etc etc etc. I told her she's super crazy and to get the heck out of my house before I destroy everything she owns to see how she likes it. My parents dropped over the half-used spare formula from their house but they think I'm being harsh on my sister and that even I've gone a bit too far here. My husband agrees but also agrees with me that our son needs to eat and my sister needs help. He thinks I went too far insulting her mental health. Am I the a-hole? Not the a-hole. Your sister is your parents' responsibility. Your son is yours. You do not owe anything to your sister. And she can move back to your parents and she can pay rent or something with that money she is making at her part-time job. A young baby is hard to take care of and you don't have to give your sister the care your parents should be doing. Your parents are the a-hole and should never comment on you having to deal with your sister. What the heck is wrong with them? If I were you, I would not kick your sister out before having a plan where she could stay due to her mental health. But your parents should take their responsibility as her parents and find her help. 
Your focus should be on the baby, your husband, and yourself. Parents kicked her out first, then get mad when someone else can't tolerate her behavior. Add in, in the U.S., there is a formula shortage, and doing this would literally cause severe harm. What if you can't replace their formula? That is severely mentally ill territory to risk a baby's food source. It's not dramatic to lose your patience slash leniency when she does something so deplorable due to her own issues. Ask your husband when and how you're supposed to get new formula. Then ask him if you overreacted. OP, don't let her back into your home. This is too much for your own family unit. Your parents only think you're being too harsh with your sister because they don't want her moving in with them. Especially with the formula shortage over the last two years, I would go into a rampage if anyone destroyed my baby's source of food that was scarce and expensive. I truly hope your sister can get the help she needs, but you're not the one who should be obligated to help considering you gave birth a few months ago. Your parents are a-holes for insisting you care for her while you are juggling an infant, school, and home. Not a hole This isn't just a manic episode. That's psychosis. That's a full-blown delusion. Not a hole your infant isn't safe around her. This. What happens when sister decides that Opie is killing the baby and that she needs to take him somewhere?